By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I have a very special game for you because this is a game based on the eternal central old school magic rules. So if you're not familiar with the different rule sets in old school magic, you can now click on the info card that's appearing on the screen and it'll take you to a movie I made where I tried to explain the different rule sets in old school in a way that it's understandable for everybody. So if you're interested in that, you can click on that link, check out the movie, and then come back to this game or vice versa. So what I'd like to do before we start the actual uh, game is give a quick explanation about both decks as they're both built according to the Eternal Central rules. And they're, um, they're interesting. So let's take a look at the decks. So I am playing with a mono black deck um, and as you can see on this deck picture this is actually the picture of the deck that i'm playing with what i've done i've chosen to add four him to two rex four sinkholes and four strip mines so they're very powerful spells and what i want to do with those spells is kind of deny my opponent from being able to play magic basically and that will give me time to kind of deploy my thrall army because as you can see i'm playing with a lot of thralls so not a troll but a thrall which is a very a unique creature to Fallen Empire. I think that we've they've seen some reprints, but not that many. And the interesting thing here, what I want to do basically is get my Breeding Pit out. And Breeding Pit is an enchantment for one black and three. And it gives you a 0-1 Thrall token at your end step. And I can use that token to sacrifice it to my Lord of the Pit or to my Abbot Praetor. So those are my two big creatures. But I also play with two Bad Moons, so I can also make a combo where I combine the Bad Moons with the Thrall Tokens, so I can kind of create a huge army. I'm also playing with the Basil Thralls, so these are Thralls that I can sacrifice and they give me two black mana. And that works really well with just your basic ramping together with your uh, Dark Ritual, but they can also help me when I want to play a Mind Twist and they need some extra mana to kind of get the uh, get the whole hand out of my, um, get all the cards out of my opponent's hand. That's what I'm trying to say here. It also works very well with Soul Exchange because Soul Exchange is a card for two black from the Fallen Empire expansion. And you can use that to remove a creature from the game. And then you can take another creature from your graveyard and put it directly into play. And the nice thing is that if it's a throw, you can put a plus two plus two counter on the creature that you're take, bringing back onto the battlefield. So again, this is something that works really well with cheap throw creatures and with the breeding pit. Uh, I'm also playing um, with the throw champion. It's not a great card, but it's a throw champion. So I basically, I had to uh, play with it. And I'm also playing with an interesting thrall here. Uh, it's the Mind Step thrall. And what it does, it's a 2-2. And when it damages your opponent, you can sack it. And then your opponent has to discard three cards. Now, basically, um, this deck is just completely built around the thralls and, and the little combos that you can make with them. So we have Breeding Pit, Lord of the Pit, Evan Praetor combo. We have Breeding Pit with uh, Bad Moon combo. We have the thralls basically comboing very well with the Soul Exchange. We also have Pestilence, and Pestilence is a very, very strong card in this deck um, because I can activate my Pestilence, and then because uh, on my end step, because of Breeding Pit, I'm getting a 0-1 creature back. So I can kill everything with Pestilence, then at my end step, get a Thrall creature, and that means that my Pestilence stays in the game. It doesn't destroy itself. Because the unique thing about Pestilence is, at least I think it's pretty unique, is that it doesn't remove itself as soon as there are no creatures in the game. It only removes itself when there are no creatures until the end of the game. So you can have a situation where you do a board wipe and then with Breeding Pit, you get it your end step, you get a 0-1 throw. So your Pestilence stays in the game. Anyway, this is my deck. I will also put a link to um, uh, my Instagram account so you can check it out there and you can uh, see the deck list there as well. This is my deck. Now let's discuss the deck of my opponent. This is the deck list of my opponent, and as you can see, there are no attacking creatures in this deck. I think that's one of the first things that you notice is those four wall of air. So there's no combat damage to be dealt with this deck. And you see a lot of counter spells, and you know, I count nine counter spells. And of course, the millstones in the left top corner. So this is a millstone deck, and the goal of this deck is really just to mill your opponent out, use your copy artifacts, probably to copy millstones, but you can also copy 
um, of course, IC Manipulator, which is very strong, or copy, for instance, a Soul Ring to get the mana you need to kind of activate your millstones every turn. Um, so when we look at this, we see the blue power. Um, we actually see all the power in this deck, so it's pretty cool. And there is a Disrupting Scepter. So I'm really curious to see if this deck is quick enough and if it can handle all the threats that my black deck has and also in terms of you know counter spells are really good when you're ahead but they're not so good when you're behind so maybe because of the speed in the throw deck i can kind of force my opponent to quickly discard spells i don't know it does look like a strong deck and what i really like there are the um the two torments crypt torments crypts and uh it's an artifact from the dark and it's a zero casting cost and you can tap it sacrifice and then it removes all the cards from target players graveyard and this has great synergy with time twister so my opponent will only probably will only play a time twister if he can first use that crypt to kind of get all the cards out of my graveyard because if you're milling somebody obviously you don't want them to kind of get the get the chance to put their whole graveyard back into their deck again because this is really a traditional millstone deck my opponent just wants to mill me to death so let's quickly go to the game and um, see what's going to happen game number one is about to start and i am sitting on the right you can recognize me by the prodigal sorcerer playmat of course and my opponent yoop is sitting on the left so he's playing with the millstone deck i've just called it millstone says no um because it's basically what he wants to do and i'm playing with my thrall deck and i've called it the thrall pit so let's see what's going to happen here Let's first look at the opening hands, and there we see, oof, four lands, no creatures, no him to Turax. I wonder if I'm going to keep this. And there's my opponent. Ooh, that looks much better there. Strip mine, two islands, already a millstone, time walk there. That looks pretty good, and I'm taking, exactly, I'm taking a mulligan here. So we're playing according to the London mulligan rules, so that means I can have a look at my hand and... Um, Draw seven, and because I've taken a mulligan, I need to put one card on the bottom of the library. If I would do it again, I can draw seven again, but then I need to select two cards to put on the bottom of my library, and so forth. So it goes to the bottom of my library, uh, one swamp there, and I could see that I have a drain life, and I also saw him to Turek there. So that's probably my main reason for keeping this hand, hoping to deploy my him to Turek there at uh, on turn two. My opponent having two blue mana up, okay, changing his mind here, exactly stripping my swamp, so I'm, I won't be able to play that turn to him and playing a time while getting an extra turn in here. And this is a great start for my opponent. Wow, and look at that soul ring and then into a millstone. And this is just my second swamp and there's not much I can do. And there's the first mill here and there goes a sinkhole and a him to Turek. And there is a Black Lotus, second the Black Lotus, seven, Brain Geyser of seven. Wow, and now even if I can use my him next turn, which I probably can because he stepped out, it won't be as powerful. <laughs> Ancestral Recall, he's drawing an insane amount of cards, and now my him to Turek kind of looks kind of lame. I mean, it's still a good card, but after a him to Turek and a Brain Geyser... Oh my goodness, look at that. So even after the him, my opponent still has six cards in hand. And all I can do now is pass turn. Wow. And another strip mine, so just one swamp. And he's really dragging me down here. There's nothing I can do here. Um, another millstone. At least choosing to play a book to draw even more cards. Do I have another him? Yes, I have another him. And at least I'm getting somewhere. And that's two wall of airs, not really that important. Maybe later in the game, because they are solid blockers and my trolls, uh, thralls are not very strong. There's another island there from Yoop. And with those two millstones, he can start milling away. And there's a copy artifact on the soul ring. And that means he can just have enough. He has enough mana, mana to quite easily and draw cards and mill me. So that's not great. I'm playing a dark ritual here. And this is fantastic. This is great that disc, so into a disc. And that means that I can start cleaning up the board next turn. And we can start over fresh. And this is difficult for my opponent. When you're playing blue, you don't have any artifact removal. And 
There's the mill for four. That's all he can do. Now I'm going to untap and I'm going to activate it. And the reason I'm doing it in my main phase is that I then have two mana left to play a spell. And there is my first throw, the Basil throw. It's a one, two from the Fallen Empire. And when I sack it, it gives me two mana. And there is a Icy Manipulator and he's tapping my throw with it so that he doesn't take any damage. And there's another him from my part, taking away that last card in his hand. And I think, I think that disc was very, very decisive here. And I'm playing a sinkhole over an island. Choosing not to sinkhole the Library of Alexandra because he doesn't have a lot of cards in hand. Maybe that's a mistake because he does play with a Time Twister. So as soon as he draws that Time Twister, he's able to resolve it. And exactly now I'm taking away that Library of Alexandria. Maybe it's something that I've thought of along the way. And drawing another card here, going to having four Swamps. Playing a Demonic Tutor. And what am I going to look up? It's not really that simple, maybe. I mean, if, if I if I look up a breeding pit, I can start creating creatures, but they're still just zero ones because they don't have a bad moon. Am I simply going to look up another creature? It's difficult. Yes, I'm just playing another basal thrall. <laughs> it's funny using a demonic tutor to look up a thrall creature. But at least I have two creatures on the board and hopefully I'll be able to deal some damage. Um, able to, yeah, deal one damage with the Basil Thrall. And there is another threat, but there's a counter spell from Yoop, so that one goes to the graveyard. Could have used another uh, creature here to deal some extra damage, would have been nice. At least I can now deal one damage at a time and playing a Soul Exchange, probably gonna get back that creature there. It's a 2-2 Thrall. But will there be a counter spell or not? And actually, um, Yoop is now looking up like, if I counter it, do you also lose your creature? And the answer is yes, because sacrificing the creature, as I know now, because we looked it up, sacrificing the creature is part of the casting cost of this card. So even when you play it and you sacrifice a troll and your opponent counters it, you lose it. And that's exactly what's happening here. Um, so that's a very bad deal for me here. So. Remember, I invested that um, that Demonic Tutor into finding that second Basil Thrall and now it's just uh, getting countered and then killing it myself. So that's uh, it's a bit of a misplay here from my part. And I'm actually helping Noob here getting back into the game because he can still mill me no problem. And drawing another strip mine passing turn here. So I'm hoping to kind of get rid of his land, lands here with the strip mine that he doesn't have enough resources to end mill me and use the icy. That's kind of what I'm going for. And what am I going to do? It's hard because you have to, I have to play out the card because of that disrupting scepter. Um, choose not to, so that's interesting. So I wonder what I have. Maybe I want to force my opponent to use that Disrupting Scepter and not being able to counter anything. And there you see the Ebon Praetor goes to the graveyard and then I use my strip, take away an island there so that he cannot tap my Basil Thrall, at least getting in an extra damage. He's still at 15, it's going very, very, very slow. And I think that's in the advantage of the Millstone player. And you can see there that my Remove Pile and Graveyard Pile are almost at the same size. And he's tapping a land and a basal throw passing turn here. And interesting hand to see that he even chooses to copy his Mox Ruby so he has enough mana there to use all his artifacts there. And we're a little bit in the standstill here and again this is in the advantage of the Millstone player because as a Millstone player you just want to want the game to slowly continue and you're just going to millstone every turn and millstone every turn and millstone every turn and then eventually you win so i would say the millstone deck has an advantage here at this moment with this situation here and to make matters worse there's a wall of air so that means i need like so many creatures here i just need a second board wipe but i only play with one disc And 
and there's another millstone to make matters worse. And there's a pestilence. Oh, and this is interesting because he has that wall of air. So that means that I can deal four damage um, every time. And I'm ahead. I'm on 20, he's on 15. So maybe this pestilence will win me the game. I mean, my opponent has no cards in hand. I have no cards in hand. Of course, he's milling me for four here. So it's going to be close. But I think I can do it. And I'm second the Basil Troll here and using my last swamp to deal three damage to both of us. So I'm just going full in on this Pestilence plan. I think it's all I can do really. Dealing four damage again. And look at my opponent. All of a sudden he's on eight. I think I can win this. I can Pestilence again here for two. Counting my cards. I think I have ten still. So now I have six in the library. Going for two here. So he's on six. And boom, that's game. So Pestilence has won me this first game. Wow, and I thought I was losing. Because my <laughs> library was getting so, so thin. So very lucky here not to have that single copy of Pestilence being milled out of my deck. Um, we're actually not sideboarding. We don't have any sideboards for this deck. So we're just going to go to game number two. And let's see what's going to happen in game two. Game number two is about to begin with my opponent on the play with his Millstone deck. So after winning that first game on Pestilence, feeling very lucky. And now let's see if I can pull it off here and actually get a, a straight victory, a 2-0 victory here with my Thrall EC build. And now let's see. Starting here with an island, showing my hand here. So looking pretty solid. Two Mindset Thralls, Bad Moon and that Demonic Tutor and enough land. So it's looking pretty good. But like you, look here at my opponent, look at you here playing a Black Lotus turn one, a Mox Ruby turn one, so he's already has, he has five mana. What is he going to do with all that mana? That's the big question. Will we see a Millstone turn one here? And there's four mana in his pool. Playing a Millstone, having two left, maybe to mill? No, deciding to play a copy over the Ruby. And now he's got his milling plan online and he's milling me for two. And there goes my Ebon Praetor. I don't really mind my Ebon Praetor being in the graveyard because hopefully I can use a Soul Exchange to get it back later. And I'm really hoping to kind of get my Breeding Pit engine going in this second game to kind of show you as well how that works and what the idea behind it is. And another mill, and I'm losing a Dark Ritual there and that's a pity because Dark Ritual enables me to kind of like get ahead on the, on the game here. Maybe playing a two spell and playing a demonic tutor in game one. A turn in, in one turn, I mean. There's a bad moon here for me, so no demonic tutor for my side. Playing a copy artifact and then stripping one of my swamps. It's bad news because it means I'm still stuck in two mana for this turn. And I have those mind step throws that I want to deploy. And not so much just to discard his hand because his heart hand is empty now after the Hinter Turek. Well, more just for the damage that I can deal because he's already milling me. And it's going fast because there's a second millstone now. Playing there another throw, the 1 2 throw that's now 2 3 because of the bad moon. I can sack it for mana, but I have to tap it if I want to do it. And he's already counting the amount of cards in my library. And that's not great when your millstone opponent is doing that. That's not a good sign. So I have to find a way to get more pressure on the board here. Playing a second Bat Moon. So again, I'm making that choice not to play my Demonic Tutor. And I think my reasoning, oh, and look at that. He's milling away my disc. This is bad news because I have no way to get my disc back. And I need my disc to blow up those millstones. So I just have to accept the fact that the millstones are probably there to stay. So it means I, I have to start rushing here. I have to find a way to deal more damage. Attacking first and playing a Soul Exchange here. And the nice thing with Soul Exchange is when it's uh, when you're sacrificing a throw, the creature that comes into the game actually gets two plus one plus one counters on it. So that means that my Basil Throw is now a three four together with the Bad Moon, actually a four five. But look at that, there's a wall of air. So he's able to block my Basil Throw. Again, bad news for me, because my opponent wants to stand still and slowly mill me to death. That's his goal. At least finding that third swamp. Being able to cast a Mind Step Throw. In this case, it's going to be mainly for damage. 
he is deciding to keep that card. Maybe he wants to tempt me to sacrifice the Mindstep throw. Let's see how he blocks. I'm having a little discussion here. I'm actually telling him that it's very unlikely for me to sacrifice the Mindstep uh, mind throw. Maybe not the best move for my part. Um, playing another Mindstep throw here. At least dealing him some damage here now. Three damage. And look at that mill milling away four more cards. And my graveyard is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And my opponent is still on 13, having that wall of air there to block as well. My opponent is looking at his card. And oh, he's, this is interesting. He's playing a mind twist, uh, uh, time twister, sorry. And interesting here is that he's the millstone player. So all the cards that he milled in my graveyard are now getting back into my deck. So that's probably why he was so hesitant. He's like, well, I'm slowly dying because of that huge throw army but at the same time um you know i've already milled so many cards i mean he started in turn one already with milling so this is just great for me um but let's see if he can deploy some tricks here to kind of get the throws off his back now that's the second wall of air that's a good start because you don't want to have any mind step throws being able to get through your defenses when you have a full grip of cards. So it's probably gonna block both throws here. And um, trying to tempt him here because I would have actually sacked the mind step throw to discard three cards here. Uh, first taking damage here, so he's taking four damage from a huge basal throw. And then I play a drain life on the wall of air because it already got three damage from the mind step throw. So I can drain him for two. It means I get two life going to 22. And passing turn here. So it's not looking good here for my opponent. Okay, that's a good card here. That's a Maze of If. And it's difficult because in EC you're only allowed to play one Maze of If. So it's restricted. And in Swedish, I believe two years ago it got unrestricted. So you can actually play with four Maze of Ifs. You do see a lot of decks in Swedish playing with two of them. I haven't seen a lot playing with four of them. Um, and is that a... Oh, okay. That's a sinkhole. That's pretty good right now. But there's a Spell Blast. So no sinkhole for me. Thinking about what I can do here. And there's a Breeding Pit. Oh no, 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 don't do that. A Power Sink, that's so bad. I, you know, I just want to get a Breeding Pit on the table. The question is, am I going to sack it now? No, I'm not. I'm just dealing the damage. Because I could have I could have sacked the mindset throw there to empty his hand. Deciding not to, because I want to keep pressure on the board. He's already on six. He's already played a lot of good cards. Ooh, I would have loved to get rid of that wall of air by sacking the mind step, but maybe he just drew it as well. Who knows? That's the hard thing. Um, let's see what happens next. Playing the sinkhole, and this time it resolves, so the Maze of If is gone, so that's very good news for me. But he still has that Chaos Orb as well. Taking care of an island, just because. And he's going to flip, so let's see what's going to happen here. And he is flipping on my biggest creature there, the one with the two plus one plus one counters. Getting a card in the middle here, as you can see I've put a slow-mo. So we can look at the flip. Let's see if he hits. And yes, he does. That's a good flip. That's a good one. Bam! Bezel throw is gone. So that means I've got two mind step throws left there. It's a little bit hard now to see my life count. Um, I do think it's not that relevant in this game because my opponent has only just one tactic and it's milling me to death. And it's looking pretty good for him, actually. Luckily, I've got that disc. And um, there's another mill here. A mill for four. Passing turn. And I wonder what I can do now. I guess I just have to activate my disc. Counting my cards. I mean, I am sacrificing two, two uh, mind step thralls, but I mean, they're, I cannot block them anyway. For some reason, I choose not to. I'm taking another mill for four. I wonder if that's the right decision to make here. 
interesting here playing that breeding pit and remember breeding pit gives you a counter at the end of your turn so on your end step sometimes i think it's it's at my upkeep because usually these cards have a trigger at their upkeep but with the uh breeding pit it's actually at the end of your turn And this is a nice combo here with my Bat Moon because it means I don't just get zero ones, the Bat Moon makes them one twos. And that's pretty good because a one two can deal damage, which is the most important thing here. Playing a him to Turek. And it's very interesting um, looking, looking back now. And when you look back, you can sometimes see things you don't see when you're actually playing. It happens to me a lot actually, is why not activate that disc that one turn and then play a breeding pit. And look at it, this is interesting, playing a copy artifact over his Icy Manipulator. And actually, um, Yup told me later, it would have been better to play that over the disc, kind of forcing me to activate the disc. And I think he's right there. So, you know, that's a, that's a little mistake on his side, but like I said before, I think I've made a mistake here with that disc, I should have activated it and then play Breeding Pit after. I mean, that would have been a solid play. Although, thinking about it, it would mean I wouldn't have had my Bad Moon. So maybe that's the reason why I didn't do it. I just wanted to keep the pressure on. And that's actually working pretty well now. Look, he's, he's blocking one Thrall token to, to death. Oh, he's not, he's changed his mind. Um, he's on two life now. Or actually he is, of course, I'm getting a, a new token. So he's only on two. Doesn't really look like there's a way out for my opponent here. Because that Thrall army it just keeps growing. And if I hadn't forced him to uh, play that uh, Time Twister, he would have definitely won with milling me out here. Um, and he's going to one life, so he has one left. And there's a Mind Twist to make matters worse, so he's got no cards in hand. Yeah, he can counter the twist, of course, but it has the same effect. Passing turn, milling me. I don't have that many cards anymore in my graveyard, like, wow. And I guess then this, the decision to not, yep, two, four, six cards left, so only two turns left. So I guess my decision not to activate the disc worked out in this case. Looking back at it, I have my doubts if that was a good decision. Anyway, these were the games here and I win. Zero two, so that's great. So my EC game of Thrall deck, it's a lot of fun to play this deck. A great victory for me here. Thank you for watching this episode of Timmy Talks. Please let me know what you think of these Eternal Central games. Do you like them? Would you like to see more? Because personally, I kind of like um, all the old school formats. So whether it's Eternal Central, Swedish or Atlantic, I play mo mostly uh, Swedish. It has a slight preference for me, but like I said, I really enjoy playing the different types and just testing out different techniques and different cards in different formats. So let me know what you think of this first EC rule game here on the channel. And also you may have noticed some changes. I'm giving more information about the deck. So I'm doing a more extensive deck tech prior to the actual match. So is that something that you like or is that something that you don't like? Can you please uh, let me know? Personally, I got some requests in uh, asking me to explain a little bit more about the decks and that's why I'm doing it. But maybe you think, okay, Timmy, you're going a little bit over the top. I'm here to watch the game and I'm not here for all that deck tech stuff in the introduction. So can you please uh, let me know if it's something you like or if it's something you dislike. Another change, I am DJing a little bit. I got a really cool comment lately saying, man, can you maybe put some Chandelar music under it? Now, unfortunately, I can only use um, music that's free for reuse you know I have no budget so I've looked on YouTube and I, I looked at okay what fantasy music chandelier inspired music can I use and I kind of went DJing and editing this clip so you kind of hear this middle ages folklore music in the background let me know is that something you like is it something that you don't like is it just distracting and is it just nonsense because I can take it away as well I think it's kind of cool not all the tunes are as much Chandelar as I would have liked. I mean, you know, it is the best magic game ever, ever made. Um, online, of course, digital, I mean, was it online? Could you play an online Chandelar? I don't think so, but you know what I mean. Um, anyway, these are a lot of changes, so can you please let me know what you think? 
comment, like, subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. I believe we're now on 600 subscribers and I would love to go to 1,000 uh, as soon as possible. Um, so if you can help me out there would be great. For now, thank you for watching this episode of Timmy Talks. And if you'd like to see more old school magic, take a look at the channel or click on one of the vids that are appearing right now. For now, thank you for watching this episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. He could just think it to somebody, cause he...